Hi, my name is Dr. Adams and I'm the dentist at the TMJ Sleep and Breathe Center. And I've had a lot of videos where we talked about mouth breathing and specifically about how mouth breathing is caused by the tongue really not staying present in the mouth. If there's not enough room in the mouth, typically when people, people sleep, that tongue will relax. It'll fall a little further back into the throat. Um, if you haven't watched any of our videos about that, we have a decent handful of those to detail that fact. Really today I'm going to talk about why the tongue does not stay in the mouth. The tongue really is the reason why we mouth breathe. It creates the obstruction that causes sleep apnea. So the $10 million question is, what can we do to keep the tongue in the mouth so it's not causing these problems? So let's talk about what the tongue is supposed to do. You can think of the tongue like a suction cup. It's supposed to lift up onto the palate and suction up on there. And when the tongue suctions up onto the palate, it should be able to stay there passively and not fall down back into the throat when the muscle relaxes. It's not difficult for suction to keep something um, engaged. You know, it's a, it's a passive pressure. It's hydrostatic. It, uh, you know, just think about it logically. If a suction cup is like up on the ceiling, it can stay up there. It's on effort for a suction cup, suction cup to stay up there. In that same fashion, if the tongue stays suctioned up onto the roof of your mouth like it's supposed to, it's not going to be falling back into your throat, causing sleep apnea and causing mouth breathing trouble. So let's talk about why people have trouble keeping their tongues in their mouth. There really comes down to two things. If the tongue um, doesn't physically fit, like if the, if the size of the tongue is much wider than the surface of the palate, just like you have a suction cup and the suction cup is bigger than the surface, you're not really going to get a whole lot of suction. So in that particular case, the tongue will maintain a low posture. And, you know, of course, when you go to sleep, that's when it's going to relax and it's going to like end up into your throat. The second reason why the tongue doesn't stay in your mouth is people may have a tongue tie. If you don't know what a tongue tie is, this thing, I don't know if you can see that, but do a Google search for quote unquote tongue tie. Pictures all over the internet and you'll know what that is. It's basically a little ligament that connects the tongue to the bottom of the jaw. And if it's really tight, It'll create tension. It'll make it difficult for the tongue to lift up and reach the palate. It'll kind of pull it down. And then once again, you can maintain low tongue posture and it'll fall back into your throat. Um, and that's really pretty much how it works. So, uh, you know, if you want to prevent sleep apnea, you want to prevent mouth breathing, we want to make some orthodontic appliances that will stimulate the mouth to grow a little wider and more forward. That'll make the palate bigger. It'll create more space for this tongue to suction up there better. Um, if we can eliminate these tight tongue ties. So it's not so hard for me to get my tongue up onto my palate. Um, it'll be much easier. And um, then we do some other things. I'm not going to get into a lot of these other things, but we've got some tongue exercises. It'll get the tongue moving better. It'll strengthen it. We call these quote unquote myofunctional therapy, um, retraining exercises to strengthen the tongue and help it learn to stay up on the palate. We also do some breathing exercises. The breathing exercises will strengthen your rib cage muscles and your diaphragm. And it'll also help strengthen the muscles in your throat um, so that your airway is less collapsible. What I mean by collapsible is the throat. You can kind of think of it like a hose. If I have a fireman's hose in my hand and I blow, I, I kind of suck in really fast and hard, like people that mouth breathe, they'll open their mouth and go, you know, that's when you breathe in hard and that tongue's back there, it's getting in the way. You know, you literally suck your airway closed. Um, if we can strengthen these airway muscles so they're a little more rigid, a little stronger. Um, that's going to help that airway collapse a lot less. Um, so that's
pretty much it. You know, we want to fix these mouth breathing and sleep apnea problems, you know, keeping the tongue in the mouth by creating more space and making it easier for the tongue to stay up on the palate. Exercises to retrain and strengthen the tongue. And then if things don't go quite right, exercises to strengthen our airway so it doesn't collapse. My name is Dr. Adams and I'm the dentist at the TMJ Sleep and Breathe Center. I have these unique perspectives because I have a license in dentistry and I do a lot of dental appliances and I also have a second license in anesthesia. We put people to sleep and when I put people to sleep, I sort of see these things happening and us anesthesia people really understand airway because if you don't keep your airway open while you sleep, while we have you in a drug-induced sleep, that's going to be a really big problem. So anyway, have a good day. Thanks for listening.